What degree of scoliosis requires treatment? There are different degrees when it comes to scoliosis, and a scoliosis degree refers to its severity or size. Now, we know scoliosis ranges widely in severity from mild to moderate to severe to very severe. And how the condition severity is determined, it's determined by measuring a Cobb angle. And a patient's Cobb angle is determined during an x-ray by drawing lines from the most tilted vertebra on the top to the most tilted vertebra on the, on the bottom of the curvature in question. And these two tilted vertebras are measured in degrees and they're measuring their tilt relative to each other. And this resulting angle is expressed in degrees and the higher the number, the more severe the scoliosis angle. Now, when should we start treatment? Well, this is a matter of question in terms of how you want your scoliosis treatment. We know scoliosis is a progressive treatment and it's in its very nature to worsen over time. And as a result of it worsening, as curves get worse, it typically means that they're going to respond less to conservative treatment as curve worsens. So the best time to start treatment is always now. It's always as soon as you find the scoliosis because the sooner you treat a scoliosis, the more likely you are to get a better result. And since it's almost guaranteed that the scoliosis will worsen over time at some level, making it more complex and more difficult to treat, that it's always better to treat sooner than later. There's never any guarantee when it comes to treatment options, but we know smaller curves will always respond better. Younger patients always respond better. So being much more proactive typically means there's much fewer limits that can what, what can be achieved on the patient's outcome if we treat curves as soon as they're diagnosed. Now, scoliosis progression means that the size of curve, unfortunately, is getting larger. And this introduces more effects as a result of the scoliosis, leading to more uneven forces, unnatural body position and posture, and possibly more complicating factors as a result of scoliosis, which can include pain and dysfunction. And we also know as curves get larger, the main thing is that they become more rigid. It's a direct relationship. As curves in the same person become become larger and larger and larger, the curves themselves become less flexible and more structural. And this means they're less responsive to any type of treatment that you choose. So therefore the conditions effect becomes more overt and harder to undo. So therefore the main effects when it comes to scoliosis, especially as it progresses, is that in children is that it leads to postural deviation. And normally the more severe the postural deviation, the more severe the scoliosis. But this is not not always true. Symmetrical curvatures or S curvatures, the person may appear more symmetrical but could have a very significant curve where C-shaped curvatures can cause more postural deviation because it causes severe translation in one way versus the other, but the curve may actually be smaller than somebody with an S-shaped curve. But most likely or more often that when you see postural deviation like uneven shoulders, uneven hips, uneven waist, or especially any type of deviation of the rib cage, like a rib deformity, these are indications that there could be a scoliosis. In children, we do not expect to see or feel pain. So if patients are not experiencing pain as children, but you're seeing a posture deviation, you should still take that very seriously because that's a sign there could be a scoliosis developing. And more often, a lot of parents don't take scoliosis seriously because the kids don't have any type of pain or discomfort, and the curve progresses and they wish they would have treated it sooner. In adults, it's completely inverse. Pain is the number one factor that initiates treatment, and this is a result of scoliosis becoming comp compressive once the patient becomes a, a skeletally mature and a full adult. And it's becoming compressive as a result of gravity over time, pushing down on the scoliosis, increasing the curvature slowly. So in children, the curve can progress rapidly during growth, but in adult stages, it progresses slowly as a result of gravity over time. Now, normally scoliosis can be treated surgically and non-surgically. However, surgical intervention requires the curve to reach a certain size of severity, normally 40 to 45 degrees or even 50 degrees or greater. And the reason why surgical treatment has to be weighted until that type of uh, severity occurs is because the invasiveness and the risk associated with this type of treatment. And because it's a non-functional treatment, one thing that we can expect is that scoliosis surgery will decrease function of the spine and body and therefore leading to less 
function throughout somebody's life. Conservative or non-surgical options include conservative specific chiropractic care. It could also be combined with other types of treatment like scoliosis specific therapy, scoliosis specific exercises, corrective bracing, scoliosis rehabilitation, and even home therapy. And normally these are combined in a way to provide a not only a stabilization of the scoliosis, but a reduction. And we know every degree of scoliosis reduction prevents not only more progression, but also provides more health and function to the spine in the long run. The majority of cases, as curves get bigger, they're more likely to get bigger. So the best way to stop progression is to actually reduce the curve before it progresses, because reducing it not only stops everything that would have happened, but it also negates the effects that scoliosis has and the momentum that scoliosis gains over time as it continues to get bigger. So the earlier we treat it in its progressive line, the more likely conservative treatment will be effective. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.